Tony Northrup, you clickbaiting bastard, you got me again. <laughs> this doesn't change everything. The weather didn't change. My dad still doesn't approve of me. Okay. I did test the new focusing system that Sony is implementing in the A9 via a future firmware update, and that is going to be available in the new Alpha 6400 when it launches. And I was really shocked by the results. Like, this is the biggest thing I've seen since the launch of the A9. And let's talk about why it changes everything and how it's implemented. And they'll go through some actual test results and show you the images captured with it, as well as what it looks like through the viewfinder when you're using it. First up, their features are implemented in two different phases, a real-time IAF, which is identifying the face and then the eye within a frame and choosing the focusing points next to the eye to focus on it. This will be implemented in the A6400 when it launches, and then later through firmware updates for the A7 III, the A7R III, and the Sony A9. The second part of this is real-time tracking, which tracks any moving subject across the frame as it moves side by side. This is not going to be in the A7 III and the A7R III. It's only going to be available in the A6400 when it launches and then via a firmware update for the A9. I think what this signals is that the A9 is not going to be replaced this year. Same with the A7 III and the A7R III. I think where they're trying to get another year out of them, but stay ahead of the mirrorless competition that is really heating up. In addition to these, they're adding in finally time lapses and, and intervalometer. So how do these focusing systems like really change anything meaningful? Well, first, you no longer have to switch between AFS and AFC. You can just leave it in AFC all the time because it is completely accurate. Whether a subject is still or moving, AFC is the right option. And I know it's not a big deal to be switching modes, but it, it kind of is a pain for something like um, the Fuji or Olympus or Panasonic systems. Like if you want accurate focusing, you really have to be shifting between those because AFS is always better. AFC is near perfect with this new system, so there's no reason to drop down. You never have to touch the thumbstick. And that's a big deal because my whole career with cameras it's been using that thumbstick. And if you watch our reviews, Sony wouldn't give us a thumbstick. And we'd be so mad because we need to move focusing points if you're going to compose the shot. I like off-center compositions. Well, now with this system, the camera will lock focus on an eye in a portrait or any subject. And you just push the shutter button halfway down or you press the AF on button. And then you can recompose because it's locked onto the subject. Eliminating that clumsy user interface is kind of a big deal, especially if you're shooting sports and you need to track a subject as they run from one side of the frame to the other. It'll just track the subject. There's no doing this to change your composition. We got almost 0% shots out of focus. The focusing accuracy was near perfect. And that's a pretty remarkable because we really scrutinize focusing systems and getting 100% is not something that we've seen before. And these, we put them under very challenging conditions. Uh, you never have to focus and recompose anymore. So if you're used to a DSLR like a D850, what you'll have to do is, if you want the eye in a portrait to just be in the upper third, there's not a focusing point where the eye would be. So you end up focusing on the eye with a near focusing point and then recomposing, and you focus and recompose. It's an old school DSLR trick and it works, but the focusing accuracy drops because people will move in the times that you're focusing and recomposing and the focal plane isn't exactly flat like that. Anyway, so it eliminates that sort of unnecessary step. Um, and for portraits and sports, it means that both can happen much faster. You are no longer moving the focusing point around when you're shifting portraits, so you can shoot whenever you want without having to change the focusing point. And same thing for sports. You'll just lock onto whoever your favorite player is. Wherever they go in the frame, you can fire the shot without worrying about if they're in focus or not. Let's go into detail about the real-time IAF part of this. First of all, in existing Sony systems, when you want to activate IAF, you have to push a separate button. I never minded this too much, but they've now made it optional. So you can just half press the shutter, and if it sees an eye, it'll focus on it. That's the way the system works in just about every other manufacturer, Olympus, Fuji, etc. So now it's, it's optional. You can either have it assigned to a separate button, or you can have it working all the time. It also properly handles disappearing eyes. So frequently if you're shooting a model, well, they might blink and then their eyes kind of disappear or they'll turn where the camera cannot see their full eyes anymore. 
and then turn back. And that can confuse some cameras. If you're shooting using IAF in something like a sport where the, somebody might pass in front of the player, the camera can get confused and lose focus. It handles this pretty perfectly. As soon as the eyes disappear, it'll choose focusing points in that same area. So it'll kind of stay focused on their face, the side of the face or their hair or whatever. It also works at greater distances. If you move far away from the subject, if the subject is small in the frame, it can still find their eye. This is in contrast to like Canon. With Canon, the EOS R, it has IIF, but you have to be like really close. You have to really fill the frame of the subject for it to pick up on the eye. The Fuji works at a little bit better distance, but you still have to be pretty close. With Sony, you can have a fairly small person in the frame and it will find the eye. In the future, a future firmware update for both the A9 and the A6400, it will do animal IAF, the A7 III and the A7R III too. So they showed mammals like foxes and pets, and it will focus on their eye automatically. And that can be really helpful, especially for wildlife photographers as the potential. We've not tested it, and I don't believe it until I actually test it. They also never didn't show any examples with birds. And I know a lot of people are bird photographers, myself included. So we'll just give you more information later. Subscribe to see that. So let's go over our test results. I shot five different cameras under the same conditions, which were variable headshots to like waist headshots, zooming in and out with 70 to 200 uh, GM for the Sony cameras or the 50 to 140 for the Fuji X-T3. I did everything in AFC because this was a dynamic shoot. Chelsea was moving, I was moving around. That's pretty common in these types of portrait shoots. Under these conditions, the X-T3's accuracy was about 24%. So about a quarter of the shots nailed focus on the eye. And I was very picky about it. Zoomed into two to one to make sure that the eye was really, really crisp. Usually when I shoot, I would say under typical conditions, I would probably get one third to half of the shots in focus with the X-T3, which is good enough for me to continue to use it. So these were extremely challenging conditions for it to drop to 24%. With the A6500, it got about 37%. The IAF and the A6500 is okay, but not great. With the A7R3, without the update, the current version of it, it would get about 60%. And that's okay. The, X, the A7R3, we like the eye detect AF on it. It actually works and we use it. With the A6400, it got 98%. It basically got every shot in focus. And that's not something I've ever seen before. And with the Sony A9 post update, it got a full 100%. Now, that might make you think that the A6400 and the A9 have similar focusing systems, like they produce similar results. Couldn't be further from the truth. The A6400 is very slow in comparison to the A9. It takes a little bit longer to find the eye, um, and of course, you can't shoot as quickly. Let's talk about the real-time tracking component of this, which is tracking subjects as they move around the frame. First, it will lock on to whatever subject you put on the focusing point on when you half press a shutter or you press AF on. Optionally, it will look for a face near that. So if you lock onto somebody's jersey, it will find the face. And optionally, it will find the eyes in that face. This is extremely useful for, for sports because usually I find it easiest to focus on a player's numbers. But especially at close range um, and with shallow depth of field, you might notice that the eyes are slightly out of focus. I'd rather have a focus on the eyes but in fast moving sports conditions, there's no way I could move a focusing point to find the eye. So the fact that it's handling that automatically is pretty brilliant. It works backwards upon failure. If it cannot see, say, a player's eyes, then it will switch back to the face. And if it can't find the face, then it will switch back to the subject tracking. And this worked pretty well as people turned their heads, faces appeared and disappeared. You don't have to use the thumbstick. The way I would use this is I would select a near center point, maybe up in the top third, especially for sports put it on whatever I wanted to focus on, and then compose the shot with the shutter button held halfway down. So it's kind of like focus and recompose, except that it's constantly tracking the focus of the subject, so you don't have to worry about the subject falling slightly out of focus and it works equally well for still and moving subjects. Both the A6400 and the updated A9 tracked better than the D5 and D500. If you recall from our original A9 review, we said that it did not track as well as the D5 or D500, so the A9 is now above them. It does a better job. 
will still jump between subjects. If you shoot a lot of sports with this sort of tracking in any kind of camera, you've experienced this. You're tracking a player, and then a player from the same team wearing the same colors moves in front of them. It'll jump between the subjects because it can't tell the difference between these two jerseys. That's a pain. It does it less, though. With something like the older A9 without the update or the Fuji X-T3 or one of the Olympus cameras, it will... Um, frequently jump to players with different colored jerseys, or it'll jump to the background subject. That still happens, but it happens way less frequently. And what this means to me is that I get to shoot longer bursts. Um, when I'm using tracking on these cameras and shooting sports, I will typically lock the subject on, hold the shutter button down until it loses tracking and jumps to a different subject. Sometimes I get three or four shots in, sometimes I get 10 shots in. Now, maybe I get 10 shots or 20 shots in. So it tends to follow the subject on average far, far longer than it used to. It's better. This is the best way to get focused on both still and action. That's kind of huge. One of the reasons we didn't immediately move to mirrorless cameras from DSLRs is that DSLRs, you could just punch the AF on button and it would focus. And with mirrorless cameras, you're always like tweaking different settings and AFS and AFC. Now we've officially reached that point with these new Sony cameras where just use one focusing mode for everything and you don't have to worry about it. It's less complicated, it's simpler, and you're less likely to screw stuff up. It's just more reliable. This is kind of unrelated, but I wanted to pass on some notes to the performance of the A6400 since it's a new camera and some of you are interested in it. The A6400 advertises 10 frames per second with continuous focusing. That is not our experience with continuous focusing on the 18 to 135 Sony F4. We got about four frames per second. So it was substantially slower. That's still faster than a lot of cameras, but like the X-T3, for example, we typically get 12 frames a second, even though it advertises 30 frames a second. So it's not as good as the X-T3 in that way. With G Master full frame F2.8 lenses like the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 F2.8, it was getting six to seven frames per second. So still getting nowhere near that 10 frames a second, but it is faster with higher end lenses, which probably have better focusing motors in it. Hey, if you want to actually learn some photography, learn some post-processing, learn about gear, maybe you want some of our presets, head over to sdp.io slash store where you can pick up our best-selling photography books, video books, all with tons of video practices. Go to Amazon and, and just search for my name, name Tony Northrup. You, you could check reviews. But then go to our store to actually buy it. Here's a coupon code for 10% off YouTube. I know you're really busy. So I'm going to save you some time and make your dumb comments for you. Real photographers don't even need autofocus. I manually focus everything. Oh, I guess nobody ever took a portrait before this existed. There goes Sony Northrup shilling for Sony again. How much did they pay you this time? Sony Northrop, haha, <laughs> Sony Northrop, funny, it's like, it like rhymes. My X-T3 gets all my pictures in focus all the time, 110% of the time. You should read the manual. You're clearly an idiot. Goodbye. That's the end of the video? Yeah, was that a oh, poor outro? Do I need to do no, something no, more? No, no.